Boreal. I'm going to use this part. Let's start on the front plane. And we're going to draw the shape of our first part of our sheet metal. Click on the line, hold down control key, click on the origin, draw some more lines for the sides. Click on the line, hold down the control key, click on the line, click equal. To mention the item, we're going to go with 11 inches, and we're going to go with 4 inches. So we just created a shape. Now we're going to click on the sketch and highlight the sketch, then we're going to go to Sheet Metal. Now if you don't see this, right click anywhere in this area on one of those buttons, and you can check it and turn on sheet metal. If you want to get rid of items, click in an area up there anywhere and then hit the check button or check it off and get rid of it. So let's click in sheet metal. Now we're going to highlight the sketch and we're going to click the base. So let's do a 0.125 radius of the punch tool. And since my metal is 0.136, let's make it 0.136. Now it's 6.625, but I kind of like it to go the other direction. This direction over here. I want, let's set it back to 6.065. See, I changed that a little bit. We'll leave it. That's good enough for now. We can always change it later. And there's our item. We can flatten it. it gives us some guidelines where it would be bent. So we'll go to the top view. And we'll click on it because that's where we want to add it. Click on sketch, sketch again. Let's go to where that bend starts. We don't want to go past that or we'll notch it. So we can see that where the little orange dotted lines are, that's about where we need to go. Click on the center line, wake it up, and then click on it. There you go. Well, that was just a guideline. Now here's the, the back piece of the plate where the plates can end up. Hold down control a key, kick up, click on the dot and hit equal. I mean midpoint. We're gonna run it up two more inches. We're gonna connect to that other line it on the other side now. I'm just hitting escape key whenever I want to get done with these lines. I just right now hit the escape key then it goes away. Let's dimension that at 45 degrees and because we have the two inches there and the midpoint relation on the back line to the front line the other angle will be 45 degrees as well. All the lines are black, so we know it's fully dimensioned. Click on the sketch to highlight it. Now we could go to there, but we don't want to do that. We want to go to sheet metal still, because we started a sheet metal part. Click on the base flange tab. It automatically follows the way the metal's going to go. And there it is. So it's like, let's do it like we did in the part on the last tutorial. 
Do it with the side first. We start a sketch on the side. And we're going to bring up a center line from the bottom. We're doing it a little different than the last tutorial. Many ways to do the same thing. Click on the line, click on the dot, click on midpoint, holding down the control key. Let's add some circles where the holes are going to be. Click down the, hold down the control key, click on the circles, hit equal. We'll make them two inches. And then we'll dimension their distance apart. I tape these ahead of time and then I put the audio on. So I'm just kind of stuttering here because I don't know what's coming up next a lot of times. So we're going to change this to one inch, but we really want it one and seven eighths inch. So one plus seven divided by eight. And then we press enter and it does the math for us. 1.875. No big deal there, but if you need like 15 64th, it comes in kind of handy. The same thing over and over. Now let's put that sketch right there at the right, right in the middle. So we right click on the sketch and then go up to edit sketch plane. And then we click on it. It says it's on face number one. I'm just showing there. Now we want it on the right plane is really kind of in the center. It is in the center of the part. Click the green arrow and now we've moved the sketch over to that plane. It's that simple. It holds all the relations, everything. So works great. Click on the sketch. We can hit extruded cut and then we can do through all both. And we did the same thing one more time. We can flatten it. We're going to go up here to the top. Click on it. Click on normal too, so it's a better view. Click on sketch. And make a center line, or I like to call them guidelines. And then let's use a polygon. But instead of six sided, let's go ahead and make this. How about eight sided? Now we don't want it pointing on the top, we want it kind of flat on the top. So, so I hit the escape key, it gets you out of the polygon. There we go. And you can actually move this around. But you can set up a relation so that you have a flat edge facing up as you're looking at it. So we click on the horizontal, and there you go. And then we dimension it by dimensioning the circle inside of it. So that takes it from one flat edge to the next the other side. Let's make it 1 plus 5 eighths. So 1.625. Now we could dimension it from the center of the circle to the edge. If you do that, that would be one way we could do it. But we're more concerned about how far that edge is. Click on that, and then click up here on this other edge. There we go. And we want it a half an inch, 0.5 inches away from that edge. So you don't have to dimension from the center all the time. You can dimension from one edge to the other edge if that's the point that matters to you. I have a bad cough, so I'm just really stumbling through this stuttering because I'm trying to keep from coughing. So anyway, highlight the sketch. And you can go up to the extruded cut in sheet metal, or you can go to the extruded cut in features. It doesn't matter with the cuts. You can use either one you want. So we're going to use the one in features. If 
there's this interesting thing with sheet metal you have a link to thickness because you set your metal thickness so any of these cuts that you make you can go ahead and set them to the thickness if it's just going through the metal now those sides wouldn't have worked because we were going all the way from one side to the other side so um, well, let's just try that link to thickness and as you see it's just kind of like going from surface to surface and it cuts right through it's kind of handy on some parts that way if you change the thickness of your sheet metal uh, your cuts won't only go partially through if you're using a blind depth so as you can see you can flatten it everything looks good but we're going to do it again really quick here so to start off we go to sheet metal hit ed edge flange <coughs> click on the lines get some edge flanges, set up their length at one inch. We're keeping the settings. Click the green arrow. So it's that easy. Save your part. You can flatten. And you see, it gives you all the little bend your CNC. Press brake to bend those or feet to this or wheels or whatever you want. So we need to go down and do it off of that edge. So hit hit the edge, hit normal two, It'll kind of take you right to it. Click on it, click on sketch. Now if we use that line there, we can probably use the midpoint of that and use a rectangle guideline to make our holes, kind of speed up the process. So if we click in the center of that now, pull out a rectangle and don't do anything leave it highlighted light blue like that and click on const for construction and it'll make it the dotted lines the guideline now we can draw our circles on that and it'll hold them all together little time saver Once again, hit escape if you need to get out of the circles that's still making circles, hit your escape key. Hold down the control key, click on all the circles, click equal. And now all you have to do is dimension one of them. And we want to make it a little bigger, so let's make it 3 divided by 16, or 3 sixteenths, or 0.1875. That math is kind of handy if you're using fractions. So we this is where it matters. So it's dimension from there, you know, to the center of the circle. Let's make it 0.5. Once again, not set in stone. You can change all this stuff later. And let's make this. Point five, and then let's go ahead and go through that. Now, since we use the link to thickness, it'll probably still hold that. So, if I click on extrude a cut in sheet metal, yeah, it went all the automatically to link to thickness. Now we don't like that hole, it's a little close to the edge. No big deal. Go down, right click on the sketch, click on the sketch to open it. Just go down there and find the dimension you don't like and change it. And since we use that little guideline rectangle, all we have to do is change one and it changes them all. There you go. Now we're going to put some fillets on this because we don't want any sharp edges to catch on cords or fingers or arms or anything. So let's go ahead and set these fillets. Let the laser or the water jet cut them for us so we're not having to worry about them. And let's do some on the back. but Let's make those a little bit larger. How about a radius of 0.5? 
Kind of soften up the edges a little here. There we go. Now we're going to have a cord running through this back hole. So let's soften up those edges as well. That'll make it a little easier to run our deburring tool. If you happen to hit the wrong thing and it turns a big blue area, just click on it again, it'll go away. And there we go. Now we have the top hole. We can flatten it. Everything's holding true. Flatten again to make it go back. 